Hello. In this video, we will present the GNN filter, which can be seen as a generalization of nearest neighbor tracking for a single object. The basic idea in GNN is to be greedy. So in each update, we find the optimal association theta star and we prune all other associations. A motivation for doing this is that taking just a single association will give us a computationally cheap algorithm and the optimal association is the single best association we can choose. The exact posterior density is approximated by a density that has a single hypothesis that corresponds to the sequence of optimal data associations. Theta star at time one, theta star at time two, and so on. So note that in each time step, the optimal association is computed given a prior density that is conditioned on the optimal associations in the previous time steps. So we denote this as theta star at time k given theta star from time one to time k minus one. The GNN posterior density is parameterized by the object densities computed given the optimal assignments. So if the object densities are Gaussian, then the GNN posterior is parameterized by the means and the covariances of the objects. The basics of the GNN recursion can be explained as follows. In each time step, we start with a prediction. For each object, we do the chapman kolmogorov prediction, and if we have Gaussian densities and a linear Gaussian motion model, then this amounts to the Kolman prediction for each object. Next is the update, which starts by computing the cost matrix L, and this is followed by computing the optimal association theta star. And then given the optimal association for each object, we do a base update if a detection was associated, and if a detection was not associated, then the posterior object density is proportional to the predicted density times the probability of misdetection. So that's the basic GNN recursion. In each time step, we start by predicting, then we compute the optimal association, and then we update. Sometimes we wish to do an object estimation, which means to use the posterior density to compute estimates of each object. The purpose could be, for example, to visualize the object tracking results on a screen, such that an operator can monitor the performance. Arguably, the most common estimator used together with GNN filters and many other tracking algorithms is the expected value. In this case, we compute an expected value for each object using the corresponding marginal density. And if we have Gaussian object densities, which is very common, then the expected value is readily available to us as one of the density parameters. A special case of the GNN filter is obtained when the models are linear and Gaussian. So we have a constant probability of detection, uniform clutter, Gaussian likelihood and transition density, and Gaussian initial prior. In this case, the posterior density is parameterized by the means and the covariances for the n objects. And for these models, in the prediction, the predicted Gaussian parameters are given by applying the Kalman prediction to each object as shown here. And in the update, the posterior Gaussian parameters are given by the Kalman update. If a detection is associated, and if a detection is not associated, then the posterior mean and covariance are equal to the predicted ones. 